So it appears that Ruben Amarim did fly over to England. He did have a meeting with West Ham. It appears that the meeting was both with uh, Tim Stite and first then with David Sullivan. It didn't go well. He's flown back to Portugal and he's going to reveal the details of what happened on Saturday. So this Saturday coming up, there's going to be an interview in Portuguese TV, apparently, where he's going to basically admit to an error. Now, it's really, really difficult reading a lot of this stuff because it's come from the Portuguese media and I'm, I'm reading it now. But a lot of it is from, a, it's from a, a CNN Portugal journalist called Enrique Mateus. The trouble is, it's basically, it's taken a transcript, which is obviously written in Portuguese, and it's just put, been put through Google Translate and, and it comes out not quite right, you know, because, it, it, well, it doesn't, it doesn't work right. It, it, Google Translate's all right for a word or two here or there, but when it's full bodies of text, it doesn't work quite so well. And to be fair, if I start reading it out to you now, it, it's, it's just, it's not going to work in any way, shape or form. Uh, basically, it goes on to say um, that the trip, the trip went badly, that the trip went badly. Um, and, and what is... I think what's interesting about that is he definitely did meet Stuyton. He definitely did go and meet David Sullivan. And the implication of this, or the inference of this, should I say, is that it went badly once he'd met David Sullivan. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to this, but it ain't a good look if that is the case. I'm also very, very mindful that, um, that football theatre and we, we need a pantomime villain. And at the moment, the pantomime villain is David Moyes, but I think it's very, very quickly going to turn to be uh, David Sullivan, uh, if this turns out to be true, particularly if it looks like we can't get this deal over the line. Uh, let, me, let me get this absolutely straight before we go into any more detail on this. West Ham can afford to get this guy. And I think because he flew over, there was a chance of getting him. The article also admits that the offer was an attempt to flush out interest from Liverpool. Now, there, there definitely was interest from Liverpool to start with, but the plan didn't work. And that's why they said there was two mistakes. I think the, the first mistake they're alluding to was the fact that the meeting, or they called it an interview, they didn't even say meeting, an interview. His interview with David Sullivan didn't go well. And then I think the second mistake is the attempt to flush out interest from Liverpool. That didn't go well either, because all that happened was Liverpool ended up appointing somebody else. Or they, well, they're having talks. Arna Slot, who ironically was linked with West Ham, um, looks like he's going to sign for Liverpool. And they don't want Amarim. So Amarim's sort of... I feel he's in a little bit of a pickle. He's in a bit of a funny situation where he's flown over. None of the things worked. Basically, his first option at Liverpool didn't work. His backup option at West Ham didn't work. For whatever reason, he didn't fancy the project. Those are my words, the last bit. I must say that. Those are my words. We don't know this to be the fact. Then what you want to do is you want to layer in the other news that has followed it. And it does not look pretty good at all. Uh, the news that's followed it is that actually West Ham might now turn our interest and might be interested in Lopetegui. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't care what anyone says. I, I, I do. But there's been a lot of sort of falsified information. I, I said this a week ago that, that Lopetegui had... had had presented David Sullivan or someone at the club with his vision, with a project, with his vision of the future. And since then, it's, it's a lot. It's not that anyone's debunking me, no one, debunking me. No one cares what I say. But it's gone to the fact where a lot of people are saying, well, actually, there was no meeting with David Sullivan. And then I think it possibly was, it was either Ornstein or Steinberg said yesterday, oh, actually, there was a meeting with Sullivan. Um, look, this guy is willing and ready to take the job. And I, and I know that to be the case. However... If you look at it on the outset, and Geo covered it in far more detail and, and far better than I will, the, the truth of the matter is, if what West Ham are looking for is a young... Um, we want a, a change from David Moyes. We want a young attack-based manager who is going to use youth players and use players in the academy. Uh, this ain't the guy. That That's not the guy. He is, I'm not going to call him the Spanish David Moyes. <laughs> I guess I just did, actually. But... He's not that guy. He really isn't. You'd go for somebody else. And it appears by highlighting Amarin, we have gone to try and get this guy. What is clear, though, is by us going for somebody like uh, Lopetegui, then that's going to put Tim Stuyton in a really, really funny position. There's no doubt about it at all. And what Stuyton, I feel, has been a patient man. I feel he's waited for all of this time and he's waited and waited and been patient so as he can, so I guess, see off David Moyes and spend a year having less control than he would like at the football club, but in the sort of knowledge that once Moyes goes, then he's going to get control. If Lopetegui comes in, he's not getting that control. So I, I, would, even, I would even hazard, uh, if I may forward this suggestion, 
that I think Sullivan's got a really, really important um, task on his hands here because I feel if he gets this wrong, then he loses Tim Stuyton. Now, who better than Stuyton out of anyone to try and copy and mirror what's going on at Bayer Leverkusen. I made that point. I made that point yesterday. I still think that's the case. What an opportunity missed it would be if we actually let this guy go. I'm also a little bit worried about some of the noises that come out of the club that West Ham may well, you know, we certainly haven't given up um, hope on David Moyes. David Moyes can turn things around. I asked a question yesterday, how's David Moyes possibly meant to motivate the side? Well, I think we got our answer yesterday, which is, well, you know, he still might get to keep the job. Well, that's going to keep him motivated. I thought at a point he knew he was a dead man walking. Then, of course, he's not going to want to stay at the club anymore. Um... But this looks a mess. I've got to say, this, this whole Sporting Lisbon thing looks a mess. And I'll tell you what it reminds me of a little bit was the Willie Carvalho um, debacle, which was the same club, wasn't it? That was Sporting. Do you remember? There was an email which got sent over from Sullivan saying, we want Willie Carvalho. If we can't make a deal, don't worry about it. We'll just go and, um, we'll go and rent someone from PSG. He didn't say rent. We'll go and get someone on loan from PSG. I think that was what... Um, I think that was what spawned the the moniker, the, the Dildo Brothers, which was, uh, I think, which I don't think was particularly classy thing to do from the Sporting Lisbon president, don't get me wrong, but but clearly he was um, he was affronted by the nature of this, uh, this fax or email or whatever had been sent over. Um, he thought it wasn't the way to do business, so he released details of it. So that's why everybody got to see the correspondence that David Sullivan had sent over. I think with that in mind, it's easy to to assume the worst here and think that he's had a meeting with Amarin and things have gone south very, very quickly. I don't know. I'm not even entirely sure that we were ever in with a massive chance of getting Amarin. But but what I would say is that <laughs> that this this is there is a there is a golden opportunity here, and a lot has been made about the release clause or lack thereof of um, of, of us being able to pay the release clause, which is rumoured to be anywhere between. I don't know, 12 million euros and 20 million euros, somewhere in between. Let's get this absolutely right. West Ham are about to release their best o ever um, figures, a record turnover, a record turnover of nearly 350 million. Yes, uh, Declan Rice's figures are involved in that and are um, a part of that and been factored in, but, and so is the European Cup run. But make no mistake about it, in terms of FFP, we can still go and pay Ruben Amarim's buyout clause from Sporting Lisbon and make him a really, really big pledge. And we can still spend considerably more than a lot of clubs in the Premier League because our FFP is, is so good. And do you know what? And, and fair play. Fair, fair play for, to them for running it like that. And fair play for David Moyes for having a long European campaign, campaign which got us money in. Um, and I, I guess they, they got a good price for Declan Rice, didn't they? So, you know, that's all really good. But it's only good if once you get into this strong financial situation that what you do is you, is you press forward and you press home your advantage. This is really important, really important, that actually we use this money and use it wisely. I, I, I seem to have said we have one chance at this um, quite a lot. I don't think you always get one chance, but this is the best chance. Uh, it's not ideal. We, we're probably not going to be in Europe next season, but we have a director of football in place who knows how it's done. He was part of the team that helped to point um, Xabi Alonso, let him go out and get what he perceives to be the next best after him. If it's not Amarim, then let him work down his list. Don't go and get Lopetegui. Don't, don't put yourself in a situation, I'm talking to, about David Sullivan here, where you become the pantomime villain. Because you don't, I don't really think there's much recovering from it. I really don't. And, and I, I, not, I don't think overly he's that concerned about what's that, what West Ham fans think. You know, well, you know, I've seen it before with the protests. He, he, he sat there. He, he sat there whilst West Ham fans were protesting. And, and I, I'm not entirely sure he's that moved by it or he's that bothered. I hope that's not the case. All I, all I can do, and, but all it is is a hope because what we're starting to see now is evidence now coming from the Portuguese media, which is suggesting that actually things things didn't go so great. And you think, well, why, well, why is that? That must be frustrating for Stuyton, right, to set up this meeting and it doesn't go well. He's doing his job. And I just wonder if he's thinking, well... I'm lining this stuff up, but I, you know these these deals are not getting over the line for for whatever reason. And there are there are deals for footballers that have not been gone over the line. And, and as we understand it, the Ibrahim Osman one, I don't think it was great by Stuyton. I think Stuyton was negotiating with the wrong agent, but he still lined up the player. And even after it was identified that the wrong agent had been used, there was still an opportunity for David Sullivan to make that deal. Um, David Sullivan pulled the rug on the deal. So I, I just wonder if Stuyton's looking at it, thinking, well, hold on. I've lined up the best young coach in Europe. He mucked that up. I lined up like one of the most promising young wingers. 
You muck that up. Um, I, I, they, they will come a time where he thinks, I can't work with this guy. I just, I just cannot work with this with this man anyway. Um, anyway, before I go, a point in the direction of match bingo. Get your match bingo cards in this week. Um, West Ham fans, say West Ham fans, Hammers chat followers are winning loads of money, plenty of money. We're over 40 winners now. I've won myself, as you know, I pointed out there before. What is match bingo? Well, match bingo combines bingo with football. What you do is you get a card with 15, there's basically three rows of five, 15 little Incidents are going to happen in a game on there. Might be a throw-in, might be a corner, might be a shot, might be a substitution. Every time one of those happens, one of the things get crossed off. If you get a line, you get some money. If you get two lines, you get some money. If you can get a full house. In fact, there are two jackpots for full houses. All I can say is people are winning on this stuff. It is a betting app, so bet responsibly. But at £2 a play, you can't really go too far wrong on it at all. We had some really big winners last week, lots of them. There are free to play games on there as well, like Bingles, which is a really, really good game. The link's in the description below. Please do use the link. They'll know you've come from Hammers Chat. I won 50 quid in the Fulham game. There you go. Not spent it yet, actually. I should have done. Went, went out for a Chinese last night. Maybe I should have spent it then. Um, check it out. It is a really brilliant Brilliant app. Really great people to work with as well. That's Match Bingo. Uh, right, um, I think it's Watch This Space. I think we're, we're all basically on tenterhooks, aren't we, really? Waiting to see what bombshell Ruben Amarim is going to drop on David Sullivan. <laughs>